hello everyone so today's uh, agenda is uh, we uh, i will first uh, go through that uh, anthem pdf talk and i will let you know the content and after that i will revise with the mock questions and then satan and sir will be taking your doubts okay so i will first share my screen My screen is visible to everyone, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So till week four, we have already seen that in quiz one revision. Okay. So uh, in week five, we still said business logic layer controllers. So things that you should know are the place pass. Uh, sorry, Flask basics in in instantiating a Flask app. basic routing decorators in python rendering templates with jinja redirecting error handling flask sql alchemy that is instantiating a db object configuration of database creating models and establishing relationships okay and you already know if you uh, these are the hyperlinks if you click these links it will get you through the sessions which will deal with this content okay uh, wix is which deals with apis and rest the thing that you should know is flask restful that is resourceful routing and endpoint mapping argument parsing using reg pars formatting output and uh, testing api with simple curl and postman commands so like uh, you can find this curl commands in your question paper okay and the things that you should know is the algorithmic complexities double data rate numerical on algorithmic complexities week 8 which deals with application front end things that you should know is a concept of dom dom manipulation browser client operations client side computation basic javascript okay now we will go through the mock excuse me ma'am is it visible to you yes ma'am uh, where can we find this pdf i have already shared it in supplementary contents you can find it in the swi source code it was already shared just check it once okay uh, uh are this forms visible to you yes ma'am slightly yes okay, ma'am please yes ma'am fine yeah better yeah better the following regarding dom so basically what is dom dom is a document object model so straight away this first option is incorrect right just because it is saying it is document object model module so it is not model it is an object uh, like model so we can see whenever we see html so we understand it like uh, by different tags right that it is a head tag it is a body tag so we understand it like that but how does the browser understand this uh, html document it understands it like a tree structure so dom is like a tree structure this is how the browser understands an html document <coughs> <coughs> sorry so dom is a, uh, is like a tree structure module a tree structure model of a web document and uh, you would have also seen that the objects of the dom can be manipulated without manually changing them in the document so for the question number 1 the right answers are option number c and option number d okay uh, ma'am can you explain option number d what is exactly meaning of manu without manually changing them so uh, like uh, you can consider it uh, suppose i have a file index.html okay so it is uh, uh, stored on my server so it in the render temp uh, in the templates folder right so it is a static file if i want to do uh, suppose if i want to do changes into my file so i will have to suppose i have created one application and now i have changed something in my file so uh, again that the i have to reload it and the content will be reflected from the server side the uh, the request will go again and then the data will be reflected right but uh, in case uh, now if if we are dealing with the javascript like uh, we are not dealing it in the mat1 syllabus we will do it in the mat2 syllabus so we will deal with the front end okay so most of the changes we will be doing it with the help of javascript we will be doing it on the front end side suppose if we want to uh, <coughs> edit very a uh, few things in the front end part so we can directly do it with the help of javascript 
on the client side itself so uh, it has uh, it doesn't need to go to the server side and again the fetch the data some minor changes we are able to do it on the front end side itself that is client side itself so uh, with the help of javascript so these objects of the dom it can be man uh, manipulated without manually changing them in the document uh, this uh, line implies that okay. okay so it's like a virtual dom manipulation using javascript components yeah it's like that okay uh, now question number two which of the following is true about asynchronous updates okay so uh, you will see that uh, nowadays what happens whenever we like whenever we load the page or whenever we hit url all the content doesn't come at once okay so part of the page will uh, part of the data will come first and after that as required the later data comes okay so this is also known as lazy loading so this is sort of a asynchronous update in case of synchronous update what happens suppose if i am hitting one url so it will load all the content so then we have to wait for the uh, for that data and it will show loading loading the content right so we have to wait for the data to be fetched so uh, this is known as a synchronous update so all of the data will be fetched then we will be able to see that page but now that uh, nowadays what happens the part of the data which is most important data suppose uh, i have different pages home page dashboard page okay now so home page suppose home page is my landing page so first of all that data will be loaded which is very much important and then if i click on some data then it will redirect to that data or that page okay so this is a synchronous update so what it says it, uh, like the first necessary uh, it is first necessary to load the main page then it will load the additional data in the background so this is a synchronous update okay and uh, second is in every request it will load the entire web page no this is uh, the loading the entire web page is synchronous update now as i already said that uh, if suppose you are uh, you want to access uh, one page and it will start loading all the data out of it and we have to wait for it then obviously your ex user experience will not be good right but in case of asynchronous update it will first load the main data and after that it will wait for the additional data to be loaded in the background so because of that because of asynchronous update my user experience is also improved so what are the correct options and uh, what is the fourth option as a result of asynchronous update server load has increased so it uh, like with the help of uh, by synchronous update we see that <coughs> that all the data should be loaded all at once so obviously the data will be coming from the server side and that will increase server load but in case of asynchronous update as i said that even for uh, minor changes we are able to do it in the client side itself so obviously it will increase the it will increase the client load and not the server load right so which are the correct options for this option number a and option number c are correct is it clear <coughs> now we will move forward to the next question uh, consider a table worker in a sqlite database so this is my table worker which has this worker id first name last name salary and department okay so uh, the correct sql query that will print details of the workers whose first name contains a will be so first of all uh, this question is dealing with the wild cards okay so why this question is here that uh, you should be able to know the concept uh, this concept will be used that is wild card concept this will be used in case of project while you are doing the search functionality Uh, but uh, as of now we are not dealing with the uh, directly from the sql questions uh, you may find one of the question uh, from the wild cards like this but the possibility is very rare okay so as a question but we will see uh, so what is the sql query that will print the workers whose first name contains a so here focus on this it is saying that the first name should contain a so there are no restriction where a should come where it should start with a it should end with a or the a should be exactly on the second position there are no restrictions on this so in the first case if we see like that if it is written as percentage a so what does this mean that uh, it should end with a and i am not bothered about what is the content before this a like uh, you can see here ravindra okay so you can see it is ending with a and we are not bothered of all the letters which are before a okay so <coughs> this is what first option says okay the second option is that it should start with a and i am not bothered what is coming after a so you can see the option as abhinav okay so it is starting with a but i am not bothered of uh, how many number of characters or what are all the characters which are there after a 
and uh, and uh, for option number 4 you see that uh, it is says slash a so uh, like uh, this hyphen a so what does this uh, says that there, uh, there there should be exactly one letter before this a and a should come at second uh, second place and i am not bothered of all the data or all the letters which are there after this a so according to our condition we only want that the name should contain a so what is the correct option for this the correct option for this is percentage a percentage which denotes that it should contain a i am not bother how many letters are there before this a and after this a okay so the correct option according to our condition that is it contains a will be option number c okay so ma'am it is not case sensitive oh no it is not case sensitive okay okay now we will move forward to the next question consider a following python code below from flask import flask request url for now here we have initiated our app uh, now we have three different routes first one is for the first the endpoint is dashboard second one is user and here this is converter username uh, you would have seen different types of converters and you would have also used in your lab assignments right there are different types of converters like int string and uh, your float and uid and path so uid we don't use that generally so uh, this is one of the converter if nothing is mentioned so by default it is string converter okay so now third is uh, slash login endpoint here we have defined two methods gate and post okay so in this definition dashboard so we are returning this is dashboard in user definition we are returning this is username profile here as we are using converter it is expecting the data from the url itself Uh, this is not a query parameter in case of query parameter what we do suppose this is my endpoint slash dashboard so suppose this is my endpoint so i will write http colon slash slash this will be my local host okay now suppose this is my endpoint login okay but if i am writing something like this and uh, if i am uh, like if i am if i am using converter over here so this means i am expecting some data <clears throat> sorry so suppose if i am writing here abc so this abc means this username this converter username will accept this data and then it will pass that data to this definition okay so it as uh, by default it is string so now abc will be acting as string inside this definition and it will be used accordingly okay but now if i want to use it as query parameter so what will i do i will pass it like this that some variable suppose a is equals to a b c so this is query parameter but if i am uh, writing a converter it means that it is expecting data like this okay now what is the question uh, and here we are using uh, Uh, like at slash login endpoint we are using two methods we are like we are allowing two methods get post and at login if request method is equals to post we want to return url for user and else we are returning url for dashboard okay so in the above flask application running on this uh, local host which of the following is the correct output if a user visits the url slash login okay we are visiting the slash login endpoint so we will first see this in this vs code then oh, question number 4 okay i think this is visible now so i will first run this application okay here white is showing not found just because this is not a correct address i have not defined anything on the base url right nothing is defined on base url that's why it is showing 404 not, not found error okay now i want to go to endpoint slash login it is giving me slash dashboard how it is coming you can see at login ha uh, url yeah. for else okay and uh, note one thing 
what is written in question using a browser this uh, this thing is very important while you are dealing uh, with this class question just read this uh, line carefully whether uh, using a browser is given or not okay if it is written as using a browser so browser is able to only trigger the get request right the browser will uh, will be able to only trigger a get request okay so here even though we have allowed both the methods but browser is not able to trigger the post method by itself that's why as request method is not post so it will <coughs> it will go to the else part and in the else part what i have written url for dashboard right how this url for works here i have i am writing url for dashboard right so here in return part i am writing url for dashboard so this is the definition okay definition name so where is the definition name dashboard here is the definition name dashboard and what i am asking i am asking to return the <coughs> i am asking to return the url for dashboard what is the url for this definition dashboard it is slash dashboard right it is slash dashboard that's why it is giving me slash dashboard uh, slash dashboard as option okay now when this will be the answer this is a dashboard when we will trigger this endpoint slash dashboard now suppose if i trigger this endpoint okay so this will give me this is dashboard as output right now when this 404 error will come whenever we are trying to log in a wrong resource right if it is not mentioned as we have seen earlier that we are trying to hit that base url but as nothing was mentioned so it was giving that 404 found error when this uh, when this uh, this option will come user slash your name <clears throat> so how you can just give me a minute <coughs> now here just focus on this url part okay just focus on this so here uh, how it is written written url for user and if i write comma username so by default if i don't provide any user so by default it will take your name as the user okay so uh, but uh, i am not able to trigger this post method but if somehow i am able to trigger this post method then what will happen it will return the url for user so what is the definition uh, what where is the user definition it is here so what it will do it will give me this slash and your name now suppose in place of uh, url for what will happen if i do return redirect now suppose so you have seen uh, simply how i can return things first of all i can do simple return and i can simply return suppose i am writing it like this okay i can return it like this right or i can write return url for this is the function which will ask for a definition okay definition name okay or else what i can do i can do return redirect so i will redirect it to a some endpoint okay uh, i'm not getting you ruhi I was just asking that URL for is an intuitive. Yeah, you have to you have to import it. Wait, I will show you. Okay. okay. You have to import it from Flask. Okay. I will share this document. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So these are the ways in which uh, you can return. Okay. Either you will return us uh, some text or else you will return URL for. So here 
it will uh, uh, look for the definition name and it will what it will return it will return endpoint uh, when i am writing it like this so it will go to the endpoint and it will return a resource which is available over there okay now suppose uh, here what i am doing uh, earlier we have seen that it was giving url for dashboard but here now what i am using i am using return redirect dashboard so now what will happen it will render this is a dashboard it will actually yeah. execute the function yeah so it will execute the function now you can see if i click slash login okay so it will redirect me to this dashboard endpoint and the answer will be this is dashboard so this was the resource which was present uh, which was present at this endpoint so it will return this is dashboard okay now suppose can you show that redirect code again this okay okay so return redirect so obviously inside this redirect i will have to give some endpoint okay so i am giving this slash dat, uh, dashboard endpoint okay so it is giving me this is dashboard now suppose uh, if i do something else now suppose i am taking a form that is home.html i am not dealing with this form i am simply taking this form and here i am allowing the method as post okay you can see over here now we will see what happens if the browser code is not given then what will be the behavior uh, like what in the question you asked us to notice that in the browser should be so uh, yeah there is one question we will discuss it again over there as well but suppose <coughs> if browser is not given so maybe we can use thunder client or we can use curl command uh, to trigger that functions right so here suppose if i am using thunder client and i i will pass this url slash login i will give this endpoint and i will ask uh, the thunder client to go by post method then obviously it will uh, go by the post method and it will return url for user so this will be my answer user username uh, this option number 4 okay okay yeah so but so we this, have, since we are using browser it will not yeah, go to post yeah it will by default it will take only get method okay now suppose if i do something like this okay so you can see this form is coming now suppose if i hit this submit now you can see what is coming this is coming slash user slash you, uh, your underscore name why this is coming now go to this question okay what i am writing i am returning this home.html so you can see so by default it will return this home dot like initially what will happen when i will go, uh, go to this slash login endpoint so as uh, like at start the post method is not triggered this post uh, post method is only trigger when i hit that submit button right which is mentioned in my home.html right so first of all <coughs> if i go to my slash login endpoint okay so this is returning me this form obviously i am not dealing it with uh, in the uh, that html i am not using any variables but uh, this submit button will work okay now suppose when i am uh, hitting this slash login by default it will render this template just because at this point i have not triggered this post method this post method will only be triggered when i hit that submit button you can see over here in this form action this method this form will go by post method only when i hit this submit button but when i am here so what will happen so as i have not triggered the uh, when i went to this uh, endpoint slash login so i have not triggered this post method okay so by default it will render this home.html so in home the in this uh, it will give me this form home.html okay so i am uh, i can see this form okay 
where it has name and it has submit button okay now what will happen when uh, and here in my form i have mentioned uh, the action as uh, login endpoint and i have mentioned the method as post right and when i hit this submit button then it will trigger the post method right and when i did this submit button it triggered the post method and you can see if the request method is post so what i am doing i am doing return url for user and by default as i am not giving any username i am saying that take username equals to your underscore name so it will go to the definition user and then what is uh, what is there in return this is username profile so it will return sorry so uh, uh, like what i am returning i am returning url for user so it will go to the definition user and it will give me this end point right so that's why the answer is coming as slash user slash your underscore name is it clear is it clear no ma'am one doubt okay yeah tell me ma'am if you can go to the code or the question once it should return this is username profile right this return url for user that should return the string this is username profile why we are getting the wrong no 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 here it is written as url for okay that's like sorry over here yeah. you can see wait i will show it here okay so if you but want is to giving it like this so, so first of all what happened uh, as as i said when i went to this where is my code we have to write redirect over there okay. before you are yeah so. yeah if okay. you want it like that then we will write redirect okay, okay. here then it I is got. first going to tell got the point okay so this url for function gives just a string yeah the so url the for so it will search for this the definition name so here where is dashboard dashboard is here right hmm. so what i am returning but i am returning url for dashboard so what is the url for this dashboard function it is this yes, endpoint yes. dashboard okay. that's why it is giving it as output okay okay yes now we will move to this next question ma'am when will the uh, definition whatever definition is there will be uh, will be the output not the url what uh, when i will write it? return redirect wait okay. <coughs> okay got it i have told you like when we did this return redirect right so it was giving me if if i am writing return redirect slash dashboard so what was i'll show you again so here i will comment all of this and got it you got it fine we to the next question so here again we have a flask application app.py and here we have this endpoint at this endpoint we are simply returning index.html okay so this is my index.html this index.html has form and this form in this form the method defined is post okay so which of the following statements is are true in case web browser okay so first of all as we are using web browser so by default it will uh, every uh, every request will go by get method okay now we will see focus or application now here in this application app dot route are we mentioning the methods no no right so by it's default it will go by get method right if i am not giving the method as post and this form is dealing with the post method what should be the answer method not allowed yeah uh, so but but ma'am one doubt here so yeah. that method post will be uh, executed when we hit the submit button right but first of all whenever it will go it will see that the method is post so obviously at first itself it will throw a comment <coughs> So at first itself, it will throw the error. Wait, I will run this program. Okay. 
this is my route and this is my index.html yeah okay i will first stop the previous application so we have this index.html inside this we have this form which is dealing with the post method okay So here, yeah. Okay, showing method not allowed. But then how how yeah. we will render the form, ma'am? Let's say I want to submit something in the form. Then what can I make the change? If I want to render that form, on the so we will have to allow this method. Okay. So here, what was the question? It will throw a method not allowed error whenever it try to submit the form. Okay. Why it was throwing error? Just because we have not mentioned the methods. in this app dot route now suppose if i want this uh, form to function what i will do here i will write methods is equals to get and post okay now we will see excuse me ma'am uh, yes ma'am what i'm seeing is much of the questions or many of the questions are not taught in lectures so where can i find all of this you know am i supposed to like watch some special lectures was or... it not taught in the lecture no or is uh, it in either screen cost or you have to watch a live session it is it will not be live lectures oh uh, it is different i think it session. comes with practicing like the uh, lab assignments we have to do lab assignments for that yes. let's yes that's what i'm saying this is even to do lab assignments i have to you know have the knowledge now that makes it and this one have taken that uh, week 5 open session right so yes. i'm quite open sure that he created some applications so obviously these things uh, we would have used right yes i am learning this from open sessions itself the, i'm asking is there uh, you know any content on the portal or uh, should i watch open sessions if i have to revise like the, what type yeah. of content like this url for this methods such methods yes ma'am yes, ma uh actually uh, last time when i took the session like in previous time i discussed all of it so okay uh, nothing to worry as i'm discussing it in revision session as well so maybe you can watch the sessions of previous term but sure. a revision session is uh, enough for this I think Sathya Nand sir would have also discussed all of this in the session. Yes, yes, Sivani. Actually, it was discussed uh, in the earlier session regarding the post and get also. Yeah. Uh, Sujit, uh, Sujit, is this Sujit? Yes. Yeah, just you can watch that uh, even in the current term, the past uh, uh, things. So it would help you. What's the difference between uh, get and post? Uh, how to pass that? Uh, you know, uh, arguments using uh, get. Where it is, browser is limited for only get. No, no, I have watched those sessions. That's why I am asking because they, are, it's not on the portal. And mm -hmm. uh, so when mm -hmm. I saw them first, my one of my friends said, "Oh, you have to watch uh, sessions on YouTube." Okay, okay. So that's only the way. Actually, uh, you know, it, you don't have any specific kind of, you know, uh, like in the seek dashboard, you don't have any specific uh, things. So you need to attend for that uh, open sessions. Otherwise, if you miss it. Just you can watch that uh, uh, YT YouTube stream. That's it. Only there. Sure, sir. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. I'm sharing the screen. Okay. So now here, what is happening in my code? I have added this method equals to get and post. I have also so now. when i will try to hit it or whenever uh, whenever i will try to send that form with the help of post i have made the arrangement like we are able to send it just because i have allowed it in my application okay now uh, whenever now when i will go to this okay so this is my base url okay so you see uh, i am not writing anything over here even if we write doesn't matter just because we are now dealing it in our application but the point to be noted is whenever now i try to submit it now you can say now it is not throwing error 
why just because in our education we have uh, allowed this method yeah, okay? yeah so so can we say ma'am whenever we have a form uh, we can we have to have both the methods get and post no 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 in the form the method will be post only inside this application ha huh, yeah in the app dot route yeah. obviously the uh, both methods should be allowed why okay, okay. because the first the form should go appear at that end point right now here you can see we have al uh, already discussed it right Yeah, so yeah. first the form should appear so the method should be get right so we first want to fetch this form so it will go by guest uh, get request and when we will hit this submit button then the data will be sent to that url with the help of post method so obviously we need to uh, uh, give allow both these methods okay yeah. at that end point yes ma'am got it ma'am if the method is not mentioned it means get method is there and yeah. if debug is not equals to true it is false then what will mm. happen means the error will come or what will happen uh, it will not show that error so uh, why we are using this debug equals to true so suppose we are in a development phase and we have 1000 lines of code so what will happen uh, like here previously suppose what uh, okay i will tell it like that only so what was happened post was not uh, post was not given in my code and that's why it was throwing error method not allowed right so this information is important very much important to me when i am in a my development phase just because whenever i am or i am i am writing 1000 lines of code uh, so obviously it is prone to some bugs and i am not able to look into my code and find those errors if the debug is not equals to true mentioned okay with the help of debug equals to true it will directly direct me to that line of code where the error is so it is helpful to me okay so this uh, we do all of this in the development phase but once my application is ready now the actual users will be using that application so obviously i don't want my users or i don't want the clients to see my error so in that in that case we turn this debug so we make it as debug equals to false or we don't give debug equals to true so that clients will not be able to see those errors so it will only show internal error but it will not point out which error it is okay 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 so it will throw a method not allowed error whenever we try to submit the form so it will submit the input form data successfully no this is wrong it will happen only when i will allow the method post and also i am dealing with that data okay after the app dot py file it will throw a page not found error no it will uh, uh, give me that form okay so the correct option for this question 5 is option number a okay now we will know uh, move forward to the next question so here again it is a flask application customer info and it has this data it has four elements okay after that uh, we have this endpoint customer and here you can see again we are using converter okay as i already said uh, like there are different types of converters by default that converter is a string converter okay so data will go in the form of string but here you can see i have mentioned this int okay so what will happen in the url whatever we write it will go in the form of string only so suppose here i am i want to use that data in the form of integer so i will mention it in the converter so even though the data which is coming from url is in the form of string but with the help of converter it is converted into integer and after that when i will use that information inside my definition so by default this data will be in the form of integer so basically this converter tells the function how it should use the data within this converter what should be the form of that data now suppose if, if if i don't write anything over here then that customer id will go in the form of string inside this function and now you can see here i am using this description customer info id okay so here i am suppose uh, it was not mentioned as integer so here this id is string so the value suppose if i write the value as 3 so the value will go as string but in you can see in this dictionary this 1 2 3 are integers they are not in the quotation right so this 1 2 3 4 these are integers so suppose if i would have used uh, i would not have used this int inside this converter then it would have thrown error right but now as i am using int converter so 
it will take the data whatever the data is written over here and then it will convert it into integer and now i am passing this as argument to this definition so i am taking id equals to customer id okay which is here the after this customer endpoint okay and after that what i am doing i am uh, taking variable de uh, descript uh, like dscr equals to customer info id so i am using this id to access the element of this customer info dictionary now suppose here i am taking this three id okay so here it, uh, the value of id will become so first it will <coughs> go through this url okay so now it is taking this id three it will be converted to integer now the value of id equals to three now i am fetching uh, what i am using i am writing customer info inside square bracket i am writing this id three so for this key three what is the value? The value is entrepreneur, right? What is the value for key three? It is entrepreneur, right? So the value of DSCR will be entrepreneur. So after that, what I am returning? I am returning customer information and the entered customer is inside this. I am using this description variable. So what will be the answer for this question? So second option. Yeah. So option number B is the correct answer. Is it clear? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we will go to the next question from flask import flask now again it is a flask application so wait i will go to vs code question number seven okay so here this is my flask application so we have three different types of routes so this is my endpoint slash about page so here you can see it it doesn't have this trailing slash okay this slash it doesn't have this trailing slash in the first route in case of second route you can see it has one trailing slash after the endpoint okay and in the third route we can see there are two trailing slashes after the endpoint okay now what is the question okay so which of the following statements is are true for the url the browser will render okay so for different urls we have to check what is the output okay now note one thing if i if i simply write it like this slash say login so whenever i will run this application and i will go to this endpoint so i will get my resources only at this slash login endpoint now here it is without trailing slash right so is giving out the resource which is associated with slash login i will have to use i will have to use only this url if i write url apart from this suppose if i write it like this slash in slash then it will throw error why it will throw error just because i have not defined it with trailing slash inside my application so my application doesn't know how to deal that and it will throw error as page not found okay so if we are simply writing it like this that is we are writing it without the trailing without trailing slash then if uh, what are the acceptable url the acceptable url is slash login okay and it will throw error for this slash login slash url now suppose if i give the slash login along with trailing slash so what will happen it will accept both the urls so the acceptable urls are even you can access it with the help of login or even if you write it like this then again it will be acceptable just because i have defined it like this in my application okay after that the third condition is suppose if i write it like this doesn't matter how many trailing slashes i am giving so what does it mean it means all the trailing slashes will be combined and it will mean like this only okay 
these three things are clear to you okay ma'am now we will trailings uh, ma'am trailing slashes are not mandatory these are optional but the uh, slash which is in front of logging this is mandatory right yeah like i will wait i will like, explain you through this question okay stop the, this application the third, the third uh, uh, instance uh, mm -hmm. slash login will work slash login will work in the third instance yeah slash login will work i will wait i will show you with this uh, with this example okay so this is my first end point about page it does not have this trailing slash that project page has trailing slash and this about page product uh, project page has double trailing slashes okay now we will see i will run this application now i will go to is it project page or a is about page right this is without slash okay so when i will write simply about page you can see it is returning this is my home page right this is what we have defined in our uh, route okay this is my home page but this is without trailing slash now what will happen if i give this trailing slash now if i give this trailing slash it will throw error why i have not defined it like that in my route okay now go uh, focus on this second route okay so here you can see in this route we have defined it along with the trailing slash okay now suppose if i write project page okay so you can see focus over here i have only written this project page i am not giving the trailing slash okay now when i hit enter now notice this this trailing slash is coming by itself right okay i was not giving this trailing slash but it came by itself now you can see when i give this project simply when i gave this project page it is giving me the output as the project page right and even though if i give the trailing slash for the same itself again it will give me the same output so even though if i don't give this trailing slash it will take it by itself as it is mentioned in my application okay so doesn't matter so this is first thing we see that it was about this about page so we didn't give the trailing slash so for that simple endpoint without trailing slash it was working but when i give the slash after that it was throwing error okay and in case of second endpoint uh, that is the one with the trailing slash so for both the uh, both the urls like simply the endpoint project page and along with the url that uh, my application is working it is not throwing error and also this trailing slash was coming by itself okay now we will see the third case if we have this multiple trailing slashes okay now suppose i give only one trailing slash so you can see it is giving me the output as this is about the project page why it is giving me the when i give this multiple trailing slashes doesn't matter it is 2 3 4 or 10 that all the trailing slashes will be combined into one and after that it will check for that url and it will give me that resource so suppose when i gave only one so it uh, it worked successfully now suppose if i give two or more than two now suppose here i will give more than two okay again okay. now suppose when i gave 2 you can see the 2 was clubbed into 1 and it gave me this output if you don't give any okay. slash man if you don't give any slash. if you don't give any slash and slash will come one minute wait
okay suppose i don't give this slash so by default it is taking why just because i have defined it along with that trailing slash okay so so and it is important define... it will throw error hmm? yes ma'am if i define two app dot route uh, one with uh, project page one backslash and another without uh, backslash then uh, this will throw error because both are same one with trailing backslash and other is without trailing backslash i'm not getting you wait you uh, want me to create one more endpoint like this yeah app dot route but same thing will be there but one backslash the trailing slash will not be there can i create like that okay wait a minute what will happen if i define it over here then it will check i think uh, specifically that yeah. you are you are hitting okay one minute okay so i am defining this before this endpoint i need to change this definition so this is project only and this is projects okay I think server is stopped. Please check it, Shivani. There was one error in console as well. Yes. Okay. Okay. The definition was same. That's why. Wait one minute. As you can see, the debug was on, so detected. Restart the server. It was project page, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so in my definition, my first endpoint is without this trailing slash, and after that, I have defined it with trailing slash. Okay, so you can see that first one is coming. Okay, now what will happen if I keep it after this? see uh yes ma'am the same okay. will come they are dealing hmm? so, yeah same will be coming because they are pointing to two different resources huh? the two yeah. different paths yeah. yeah so in that case yeah it is acting differently okay and ma'am here in the uh, can you can you show the code once this code in the third route uh, about slash 
project page if mm-hmm. we write double slash in between na in light in light and number light yeah. 19 19 okay here yeah, yeah double slash or triple slash then uh, it won't work like oh, no i think i don't think it will work okay we will check but it's considering double because... slash as single slash na i think it's no, no, it won't work like that we will see it one minute Okay. And what happened, man? Trailing slash is working differently, right? Yeah. If it is uh, defined over here, so in the uh, in the first case, in this definition, uh, when I defined it with trailing slash, this resource was not present. That's why for both the routes, like with trailing slash and without trailing slash, it was giving me the same output. But when I defined this project page as a different route. so it uh, suppose if i was giving it with this project page and then for that it was giving me this resource and for this project page it was giving me the uh, for this route it was giving me the different output now we will see for this about page and project page with uh, that the last route No, uh, use uh, on. I think one. So if you use one route only while uh, while hitting one slash about page. Okay, so this is one slash, right? Oh. Okay, so for that also it is working like that. Okay, oh. so it is working even if I give multiple slashes over here. Again, it is getting combined as one. No, not for this three. We have defined it for true, right? Two only. only for two yeah so yeah. sometimes ma'am we get unicode error in python when we are defining a path so that mm-hmm. time we give two slashes it considers it as one on the system yeah so yeah i guess that's the logic here so not like that even if we give uh, if we give two then it will consider it less okay now we will move to the next question is it clear okay. yes ma'am i hope it is clear so for this question like which has only this definition only one route of project page with trailing slash so for this uh, so for this about page the about page is without the first route it is without the trailing slash so obviously i won't get this uh, this is my home page so this is incorrect option just because it is with trailing slash so first one is wrong okay second option when i will try uh, the U, for the url this url the browser will render the same as for url this okay so this one is correct option number b is correct for url about page project page this browser will show page not found error no it was uh, it was uh, it was showing me the output right now for for the url about page project page the browser will render this is project page this is about the project page right so op- both the options b and d are correct okay now we will move forward to the next question uh, consider the following class cap and the templating file so we have this app okay so in this we have this route so simply we are rendering home dot html okay so this is my home dot html so inside the body we have so this strong means bold okay so we have it will first render this is my home page after that we are using this for loop inside this for loop what we are doing for x in range 0 to 20 okay so 0 to 20 range means it will go for 0 to 19 okay inside this for loop i am using this if condition so as i am using this for loop so the value of x will be 0 1 2 up to 19 now for the each loop i am checking condition if x when x divided by 3 if remainder equals to 1 and when x divided by 2 uh, remainder equals to 1 then what i am doing i am printing it i am printing that uh, number inside this paragraph note one thing here if uh, i was not giving this paragraph the number would have come beside each other but here as i am giving paragraph as it is a block element when it, this will be rendered so 
it will uh, come one after, uh, like it will come in the separate lines okay so now here we have to check for the numbers for which when divided by 2 and 3 it will give me remainder as 1 so suppose when uh, so suppose we will check for the number 0 okay is it uh, so for that 0 it will be printed it won't be printed okay now we will check for number 1 so for 1 you can see the remainder when divided by both 3 and 2 the remainder will be 1 right so similarly you can see for, you can check for other numbers 2 3 4 5 6 7 accordingly okay so this is a very simple question so for this the option will be so you can see that uh, it should be divisible uh, like when it should when it is divided both by 3 and 1 the remainder should be 1 so the first one is 1 so 2 it is it is divisible uh, so it is divisible by 2 so that won't come 3 it is divisible by 3 it won't come 4 when divided by 3 the remainder is 1 but when divided by 2 the remainder is 0 so again the condition is getting false so like that the option becomes option number a so when it is divisible by both 3 and 2 and remainder is 1 means when we divide it by 6 the remainder is 1 so the uh, i have a question seven. yeah yeah. So um, if you look at that statement, if x divisible by 3 uh, uh, divided by 3 is equal to is equal to 1 remainder function, that entire sent, uh, entire statement is a Python statement. Right? Yeah, it is and written in Python. No, no, no. It is uh, it is Jinja. OK, we are using the Jinja filters, not filter the Jinja uh, block. Uh, right, right. But mm -hmm. still, the, the uh, syntax is that of Python. Yeah, it looks similar to that of Python, but this is written in Jinja. Okay, uh, so in Jinja, there is no semicolon, or so rather, rather the colon at the end of that if statement, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the way of writing this condition and loop in case of Jinja. So okay. you will see whenever you start that for, so you have to use this end for. Okay, whenever you use this if condition, you will do this end if. So this is the way of writing it in Jinja. Okay. Fair enough. Fair so the answer enough. will be according to the condition. The answer will be option number A. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, five also will come, no? Why five will come? Oh, because dividing uh, by three it will give remainder to not one. Dividing so by three. This is and like, condition. Uh, Look over here. This is and yeah, condition. So, so this all this yes, condition yes. is when both of this condition is true, only then it will print that number. Yeah, so when divided by three, is it giving one? What is five divided by three? Is it giving remainder as one or two? Okay, 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 okay. sorry, sorry. Yeah, so it will print yes. that number okay. only okay. when this condition is true. So you can consider it like it is okay. when it is divided. Okay, fine. Now we will move to the next question. So, so the it is multiple plus one. one. Hmm. What? It's a multiple of two or three plus one, like the answer would yeah, be. Like that you can consider, yeah. Uh -huh. What is the correct sequence of inserting a data into the database using class SQL alchemy? So how do we do it? So, yeah. Third we create an object, Third direct one. to the First session, one, right? and then we commit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Need an object and add, we don't and create a session. Yeah, no, 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 let me answer this question. So how we do, we go to the Python shell and after that, what we do, we create a Python object, right? Once we create a Python object, so then we will add that Python object. How we do, suppose uh, I am using this, uh, suppose I have uh, one database where I am simply taking the name. Okay. So how I will write, I will write. Suppose my table is with uh, say name data. Okay. So how I will write suppose variable A equals to data and inside that I will give name equals to uh, suppose Shivani. Okay. So once I create that object after that I, I will have to add that object into, into my data. Uh, like uh, I want to add that object. So for that I will use db.session.add and that variable name. And once after that, after that, what I will do, I will have to commit it. So for that, I will write db.session.commit. Okay. So only when I hit that commit button, that data will be added to the database. So what is the correct sequence of in the, uh, inserting the data? We will first create a Python object. After that, we will add that Python object to the session. 
and after that we will commit the session if you don't commit the session that data uh, which i have just created will remain in the session itself and it won't reflect in the database so always whenever you create a python object and add that object so if you want that data uh, should go to the database you need to commit the session this is I'm still in call, right? Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah, but it's good. Now we will go to the next question. So here, a model class company is used to create a table company in the database, which is shown in the figure. So we have this table, and we have different columns: employee ID, name, salary, address. So what will be the output of the following Python code if the code is executed from the Python console? Okay. So first of all, what I'm writing record equals to company dot query dot filter. Uh, uh, sure? For for like uh, here we created the object for uh, inserting the uh, values right in the database. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. while updating that uh, particular tuple or maybe some column, we are updating in that tuple. So Maybe again, we into. have to commit that, right? We if don't... we don't commit, the data will replace. Okay. What? We have to commit, then... but we don't have to add that, uh, right? No, no, no. What we are doing when, like, if I want to add a new row, if I want to add a new object, then I will create that object and then I will add. If I'm updating something, this by default means that the data is already present in my database, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm updating it, right? So for that, you will first fetch that data. From the database and then you will update that and you will commit that okay. these are two different operations right okay. updating but, and updating. but ma'am we have checked like uh while doing update we don't really need to use commit without that also we can update it in the database right no i don't think so without commit no, how commit, it commit we, use, commit but we don't also. use add again for that we just yeah. reassign the values for uh, that so for so while updating also like is it compulsory to use commit yeah you should use commit uh, like if you don't use commit that like suppose if i am updating it and if i try to fetch that element in session itself like like on my console itself so you can see that data but whenever you try to uh, watch uh, like if you query that data from the database you will found that data is not reflected so commit is very important. If you don't do the commit, the data will be reflected in the session itself. It won't be reflected in the database. So commit is very okay. important. So ma'am, can, can you write two lines in the VS code? Uh, if I'm saying that correct, in the VS code. You can write. Yeah. Like uh, my, uh, I, I have variable A is equal to, mm -hmm. my module name is student. So, sorry, my, my query is my query is db dot session dot query. Like a is equal to db dot session dot query. Query, and then some model name inside it. Query, and like student model name, double parenthesis and model name student. Okay. And I write dot all. Okay. Yeah, dot one. first maybe dot first dot first. If so I if you write this dot first, so, it's, so it's it my will give me first, only the first object. Yeah, but uh, uh, now um, I want to change its name. So I will write in the next line. I will write a dot name. Mm -hmm. it, suppose uh, it's it has <clears throat> yeah in the next line a dot name equal to the, the new name like Himanshu maybe any, any name and then I don't mm -hmm. need to write any statement like uh, db dot session dot add a because a is already there right? I, I don't wait so we have this this is crud okay mm -hmm. so we define we have we perform four operations it means create okay read update and delete these are my operations right 
what do you mean by term create that i want to create an object to my database or i want to create a row or a data to my database this is what create means right read means here when you uh, when you are writing this db dot session dot query okay when you are querying the data it means mm -hmm. simply you are reading the data right mm -hmm. so that is read function okay now what is mm -hmm. update what do you mean by update that some data is present now i want to update that data right so first mm -hmm. i will fetch that data and then i will do the required changes okay so correct first correct. of all as, as as i said is it related is it similar as that of create no is this create and update same obviously not this update update suggests that there was some name suppose uh, it was shivani and now i want to update the name shivani to himanshu so for mm -hmm. that i am using this update so what is doing i what i am doing in this update so first i want the data which has name shivani okay now mm -hmm. i have queried it with the help of this query and suppose it was my first object okay so now mm -hmm. i am telling the change that data to himanshu okay once i am able to do that then i will write then i will commit that data right okay so this is my update function so, so out of word it is update so do we so when you have written it like this why will you add that again you simply you are simply updating the data object was already there you are simply updating that data okay so there is no need to add one more data if you add one more data then it will that entry will reflect after the uh, after all the entries okay so this is my update did it is quite uh, clear right and yeah. when you want to create so how will you create if you want to create a new entry so how will you do that you will create that object like suppose a uh, student is so we will take another variable suppose this is b suppose student was my model okay so inside that i will give my name like suppose student dot name equals to whatever okay i am not writing it so i am doing this okay once i add that after that i will write db dot session dot add add this entry why this entry is not present in my database i want to insert this entry this is a new entry right that would want to add, add this entry and after that i will commit this right after that after that i will commit this okay so this so means for update if you are doing update then why will you use that add function okay so this was for update and writing it like this would mean adding a resource or adding new entry okay i have one question regarding this only yeah tell me uh, one question was there in that uh, three uh, tuple were added and two were yeah complete. i will come to that question yeah i will come to that question okay. is it clear i hope it is clear now yeah okay so now what is happening over here we are querying the data and here we are using this wild card so i want to fetch the data employee name and it should be like what is the meaning of this that it should start with a and i won't bother what is there after a okay so you can see according to this condition i have two entries amruta and akash right and what i'm uh, so this record will contain i will type it over here we can so whenever i write it like this so here what will happen here it when i am querying that data will have list of objects it will have the list of objects okay it will be the list of objects when i do this query so after that i am using 
using for loop so for records in record what is this record record is the list of my objects so inside this list what i am doing for record in records for record in records i am printing records dot employee underscore name so when i am using this for loop so it will go to the first element so this is my object okay so what do you mean by the object so it is my object which will which will hold all the data employee id employee name salary and address okay so in this object all the data is there now i am accessing that data with the help of this argument employee underscore name with this attribute right yeah you can see here we have these two entries okay so this is a image okay so here we have these two entries record number 2 and record number 4 so the first line will give me two records record number 2 and record number 4 so inside this for loop i am printing records dot employee underscore name right so it will go to this object then it will look for the employee underscore name and then it will print amruta okay similarly it will print akash so what will be the answer for this question it will print am all the names then what we will do we will simply do uh, query dot filter dot all and if i will simply do for records in record then it will print all the names like this okay now when i want to print it like this so these are my objects right so how when when it will print like that when i will uh, write for records in record and i will simply print the record like records then in that case it will give me this objects is it clear Ma so, so if we do it like this um company dot query we get a list of objects and if yeah. we use that execute function then we get a list of tuples so here it will give me the list of objects okay now now suppose here in this case if i am not writing this employee underscore name so it will print it will give me the list of objects like this okay so and now if i do query dot all so here it was giving me i will write it over here only so this line will give me the list of objects okay and what was the answer for this amruta akash and akash okay so this was my first case now if i want to print it like objects then i will simply write print records okay and now what is the third case now if i want to print all the names okay now if i want to print all the names i want to print all the names then i will remove this condition okay and it will give me i will remove this condition and we don't need to put filter i think query dot uh, maybe that object uh, model name if you put it like this then it will print all the records okay
I'm committing all of it. Okay. Okay. Now we will move to the next question. Now here, as I said, there are different types of. Uh, so here again, it is a flask application, and here at that abdo route, I have this endpoint, and after that, I am using this converter. So as I said, there are different types of converters. One of them is this path. So whenever you use this path converter, so all the uh, like uh, what are the endpoint or uh, directory sub directory which are mentioned after this endpoint, it will print all of it. Okay, like as I asked to print the path. so it will give all of the data which is present after this endpoint what i am doing i am taking this converter and after that i am simply returning the path is plus simply it will print all the path which is after this my path route endpoint okay so here after my path route i have this is my directory sub directory home page okay so it will return everything which is there after this endpoint so the answer for this question will be option yeah. number d okay it will return all the data which is there after that route uh, ma'am what if we don't uh, mention it as path so by default it will take as string right yeah it will take it here yeah, by default it will take it as string it is string only but then the output will be same or it will change or it will be error if uh, it will throw error just because i am not handling it properly inside my function what this path converter does it it will give me all the path which is there after that okay now if you uh, like if you are writing anything after that and uh, you are not if you are using it after that then it will return it like that only okay but i can consider that part as string as well na no? and string can uh, concatenate okay let me will check We see what it returns. Okay, so my path right. Suppose I am giving something. Uh, Ma'am, you have not removed the converter. It is path. Yes. What? Uh, oh yes, one minute. Yeah. Debug is true, right? Okay. Now here you can see in my route. So suppose I am simply writing a path. okay so it is expecting only one uh, like uh, after this endpoint it is accepting some data so here here my route is like this okay so just check what will happen here if i give multiple endpoints to it now the path was able to handle that okay but now if we use it like this no it should be url path should... right Yeah, inside the definition. Otherwise, you have to change in return statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Path. Definition. And the return statement also. Okay, it is fine now. Now here, earlier it was URL. We are using. We were using converter, so it was printing all the data. Now I have only one endpoint. This my path route, and. i am i am expecting only one part of data and i am not expecting any endpoint after this right now what yeah. will happen if i hit it like that now, uh, now you can see this was my endpoint okay and after my uh, so my converter was expecting only this uh, data and i am able to handle it in my application but here you can see i am giving this multiple endpoints now when i hit this it will give not found error why it is giving not found error You tell me because extra uh, variable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just because earlier it was converter, but here 
it is simply one end point right it is expecting some data and we are not handling multiple end points but earlier what was happening we were giving path as converter so what were whatever was written after this end point it was simply printing all of it okay so this is the difference between these two yeah. okay is it clear yes ma'am yes okay yes. Now we will move. So path is a specific uh, converter for specific uh, converter. Path. There are different types of converter like integer, string, path, UID, float. So this path, what this path will do, it will check that endpoint and all the data which is present after that endpoint, it is able to handle that data. It will pass to this definition. Okay. Will it okay. Uh, handle the email thing also? Hmm? Like use an email, email also like in yeah. email. Yeah. Okay, so I will write it over here. So for path, uh, you are giving a lot of uh, entries, right? But what about integer only one, yeah. right? You cannot have I multiple. Will, I will write it over here. Okay, when I was using this path, URL path. So when I was giving this as input. Wait, I have changed this function, right? I first find this. Okay, these definitions are different now. Okay. Suppose if we are giving both of this, now we will see what will happen. So in first case, I'm giving this a path converter. I have written something wrong. Is it fine? Yeah, okay, fine. It is fine now. Now suppose if I pass it like this, I have to read in my server. Yeah, it is giving so 404. Mm -hmm. It is giving, wait, I will show that again. my path wrong and if I am giving okay now you can see it is giving me the path is this okay now suppose if I comment this okay so I am only able to handle only uh, one part of data after this endpoint. I am not giving multiple endpoints. It is not able to handle those multiple endpoints. OK, so for this. Now, if I give only this much of data, then it is able to handle that. OK, but if I give multiple endpoints, it should throw error. Fine. Yeah. If the same applies to integer code also, multiple thing cannot handle, right? It cannot handle. Oh, no, no. Multiple thing it cannot handle. This is a speciality of only this path converter. Oh. But other things only one uh, thing is handled. Yeah. Multiple ones. So others are. So this enter string if we are not handling multiple endpoints in definition. So for string also, only one uh, it string will throw error. OK, it will not consider everything. So this was string only, right? So even if I'm writing path over here, this is simple sort yeah. of string. That's why I removed that URL, okay. just because that it will confuse you. This is simple converter, string converter, right? Okay, As so I said, even if I don't mind. Yeah, so this was simple string converter. So when I wrote that my path route and GHU after this, so it was taking this GHU as string and this was okay. uh, it was returning me like that. Okay. But when I gave multiple endpoints to it, so you can see it through error just because my app dot was not able to handle that. 
but in case of path what uh, doesn't matter how many endpoints you give it will be stored in this path variable and it is able to be handled into my route function okay okay for string i thought you'll consider everything as one string but it does not right yeah mm -hmm. yeah i thought the same but uh, yeah i got the concept it works like os.makedirs if you have used it so if the path is not existing it will create it but if we are putting it as string mm -hmm. then it is not able to find it so it is returning as uh, 404 so in case of int and string so it is not able it is not able to handle this multiple endpoints and it will throw error okay uh, what else is there in string and float and path uh, in string float path and something uuid is there so we never use that something as uh, uuid so we never use that okay so after that a model class product creates a table product in the database as given below with product id as the primary key okay so product id is the primary key and we have different fields as product name unit and unit price okay the user wants to retrieve a list which consists only names of the listed products the correct function that does that is now focus on one thing here is it mentioned that we are using browser or something it is not mentioned right so we can have other methods to trigger our method as well other ways to trigger that post method as well okay now we will see this first option so basically these are the snippets of my flask application okay so now we will just check what is uh, there inside this definitions now for the first definition we see allowed method is get so inside this definition what i am doing products equals to product dot so this is my list okay inside this list i have product dot product underscore name for product in product dot query dot all so basically this is list comprehension how you can comprehend this so and what i'm doing return the list of products is so you can consider it like this here basically you can consider it like so suppose this is my this is my empty list okay after that i am querying the object so suppose i will write small products equals to the name of my table is product right so product dot query dot all okay so here what is happening in this case i am querying all of my data so what it will give it will it will have the list of all the objects right so it will have list of all the objects this in this case of product dot query dot all it will give me the list of all the objects which is present in my table okay after that what i am doing i am using for loop for product in product dot query dot all so how can i write it in this variable product this is my variable product so okay so i can write like this for prod in products so basically what i want i want the list of all the product names so what i can do with the help of this loop i can first fetch the uh, i can uh, like i will fetch this object after that i will try to fetch its name and then i can append that data inside this products list so what i will do how how will i do that uh, how i will do like that so i will write 
for fraud in products i will write products or i will write it like this i will write it like this product dot append inside that i will write so this will be prod just because i am using prod okay so it will be prod dot the attribute was product underscore name okay so i will append this list okay so now what is the meaning of this line this was the list comprehension okay so what is the meaning of this line that i am creating a list inside that uh, i am uh, like i am running the for loop i am querying the data and after that i am taking the product name and it is create uh, like it will uh, like uh, when we run the loop so it will go through each and every object then it uh, with the help of this product underscore name attribute it will collect all the names of the product inside this list and after that it will return a list now we will go to our question okay so you can see what is happening over here products uh, like this is list comprehension so it will fetch the data and then we are returning the list of products is products okay so this is first option what is the second option you can see the first option and second option are all same only the difference is the method here it is mentioned as get method and here it is mentioned as post method so as i already told you here it is not mentioned that we are using the browser or we are only triggering the get method so for this question both these options will be correct just because we can have other ways of fetching the data with the help of both of this request get and post we can use thunder client or we can use curl commands so with the help of that we can fetch this data so both these options are correct now we will see the third option in this third option we are writing for product in product dot query dot all okay but here we are not writing product dot product underscore name that's why this is wrong okay and in this fourth option we are simply querying the data we are not uh, asking for this product underscore name so okay this option is also incorrect so the correct options are option number ma'am why uh, a post method is correct uh, i didn't get that yeah in the earlier question when we were discussing some of the questions uh, where is that question okay so in this question do you remember this question i said that like inside our form the action was post right but we uh, we, uh, we were not deleting the post method inside my main function right the method allowed was only get yeah. so at that time i said that we are using browser so browser by itself is capable of only handling the get request it doesn't yeah. handle post request by itself you can see whenever i like whenever i will try, suppose here i am writing google.com okay yeah if yeah. i write this google.com and i hit this url so it is giving me some sort of resource so this is a get request i am not posting my data to server okay so this is simply a get request so browser is capable of handling only the get request hmm okay that we are uh, using this application with the help of our browser okay running yeah. on browser but here yeah. in this question yeah you can see i have not mentioned whether i am using browser or am i using any other methods to trigger this so that's why in this case both these methods are applicable okay we just okay. because it was not mentioned that i am only using the browser that's why both the options a and b are correct okay okay now we will move forward to the next question yeah. this is a model class product which has product table a table product in the database object db is as given below with product id as a primary key the owner of the inventory wants to add a new product now here you can see we want to add a new product gypsum in the product table such that it has 75 units with 60 rupees at, as each cost of the unit which function is uh, which uh, what function will currently do this okay so here you can see in this case we are taking new prod new prod equals to product product name 
these all are right db dot session dot add but here we are not committing it right that's why this option is wrong now we will see second option in this second option here again we are uh, we are using this variable new prod inside that we are giving the product name units price we are adding it after that we are committing this okay so option number b is correct in this case of third option so we are only giving the product name and in case of third option uh, fourth option slash products request equals to post product name gypsum unit price divider session dot add so in this case Methods are we are giving the post method, right? The method is not so here. In uh, if you see this route, I am not allowing that post method. That's why again it will throw error. So the correct options are. So there is only one correct option, which is option number B. Is it clear? Yes. I hope it is. Clear. Now the next Ma question. One, one doubt in that question. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. So here in the option B, as we have defined new prod is equal to product, and we have mm -hmm. created that entirely. So let's say a similar thing if there was an option C, but without creating that new product. So db dot session dot add. So can we directly add a product in the session? Do we need to create the object first and here, then add? Just focus on the question. The owner of the it wants to add a new product in the product table. We want to add this into the table, into the database. If we only write db dot session dot add, and if we are not using the db dot session dot commit, then the data will reflect only in the session itself inside that console shell. But that data will not reflect in the database. So that option would have been incorrect. Yeah, that I understood, ma'am. Actually, my question is like, uh, in the option B, we have created an object new underscore mm -hmm. prod. So, without creating that object, if I directly mention the attributes like we have done in the option C, product name equal to gypsum, then units equal to seventy five. So, will it work, or I have to create the object first and then add to the session? That it is asking course. for creating the object, right? Okay. Here it it is mentioned that I want to create. Yeah, I want to create a new product. That's why we are. Using this add command, right? If it was asked to simply query the data, maybe that would have been the correct answer. But here, I want to create a new object. That's why this is my right answer. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, ma'am. Uh, in this code, uh, like the method is specified as get and post. So what is mm -hmm. this? It's meaning like it. It want to say that uh, it, it's not specified that which method it should use to insert, right? So we have to use both. Yeah, you can use both the methods. It is not mentioned, but mostly if we are dealing with the form, so it will use post method. But it is the question is not related with that. Okay, so here so the question uh, was regarding adding that entry. Yeah, tell me. So, uh, the first and first option and this uh, second option is both same, right? No, but in this case, just focus over here. Here. Yeah, you can see that both the options are same, but in first case we are not committing it. In second option we are committing it. That's why option B is correct. I want to add that entry to my database, right? So for that db dot session dot commit is important, which which I was not using in the first case. That's why option B is correct. And, and in one, in the case of one. last option, yeah. yeah, you can see the B and D are same, but in this case you can see the request method was post, but in this route function you can see I uh, I have not. Mentioned the method as post. That's why it will again throw error. That's why the only correct method by which we can add that entry is option number B. Um, in the fourth option, if there is only get mm -hmm. method, then also it is uh, wrong, right? We need both the methods for post. We need for updating, right? This is a part of code, so maybe like uh, like uh, this is just a part of code, so maybe it was using a form and from there uh, it was a. Uh, so in the fourth option, yeah. option it is only get, get. Then also it will be a wrong option, right? Suppose if I, and help of thunder client, I am uh, accessing with the help of get. Then maybe it would have been correct. Okay. But here I am not uh, sending that. Uh, I am not giving that uh, post method. Like I am not giving mentioning that post method. That's why yeah. it will throw uh, an error. Okay. 
So, ma'am, we need to do every time that a commit, whether it is gate or yeah, you yeah, I will uh, like there is one more question. I will explain it over there. Okay. So here now, okay. First of all, we will see that question itself. Okay. So here you can see. This is I am using Flask SQL Alchemy. Okay. So here uh, you can see I am using this model student. Okay. This is constructor function. So whenever you use this constructor function, so you don't need to write it like this, like role number equals to one name equals to Sam like this. But here we are not. Even though we are writing constructor function, we are not using it. So you can ignore this constructor function. Okay. So you can see we have this model student model inside that model we are taking we have role number and name where role number is the primary id and then we have this name okay so after that we are doing db dot create underscore all so it will create that database okay so first of all we have this student one so this student one we are taking role number equals to one name equals to sam then you will see that I am adding that student, and after that I am create I am committing it. Okay, so once you commit it, that student will will reflect in my database. Okay, now I am creating these two students, student two and three, as student role number two three with name Lee and Sandy. So you will see after that line, I am using db dot session dot add student two. So I am adding student two. And I am committing it. Okay. So as I am writing commit after this, so it will commit the student 2 and student 2 will be added to the database. Okay. After that, I am writing db dot session dot add student 3. So even though I am writing creating this variable or object before this uh, uh, db dot session dot add student 2 line, but I am adding it only after this commit statement. And after this student 3, I am not using that commit statement. Okay. So only student one and student two will go to the database. That is, it will the data will reflect in the database. But as I am not committing this student three, so this student three will uh, like if you query that data with the help of this for loop. So as I am using it in the session and I am using data there in the session. So here. You can see in this program, I am not using that commit function after this student three. So if I query it like that, so it will give me all the uh, all the uh, like it will give me all the entries which are there in my session. But when you will open your database and you will see that only student one and student two are present, student three is not present. Why? Just because we are not using commit after student three. So only two entries will go to the database. Now, can anyone tell me what will be the answer for this question based on the options? Yes, Sam and Lee will be there in the database and in console, all three will be there. Yeah, so Sam, Lee, Sandy will option. be displayed in the terminal and only two tuples will be added to the student relation test DB database. Is it clear? Ma'am, ma here yes. I have a question. Here mm -hmm. I have a question. Student mm -hmm. dot query dot all is uh, retrieving from the database only, you no? Know? No, no, no. It is not retrieving from the database. Like if you write the student dot query dot all, so it will query all the data which is there in session itself. So whenever you do this, uh, maybe I will give you the link or you can try it on your own. Uh, like uh, in the uh, like the last terms of uh, revision session, we de discussed it in detail. So there, sir, have explained in detail. So we did this uh, student dot query dot all. Then we tried this. It retrieved all the data which was uh, present in the session and like if i said that if uh, we think that student of query dot all is uh, querying the data in the database when we see uh, when we see like that so it should have displayed only student one and two but what we found is when we did this student dot query dot all so it displayed all the data which was there in the session itself okay so if i so, have, if i have uh, any data in database like uh, any name uh, huh. already present in database then it won't show that okay. mm -hmm. It is just showing, what? it will just show the uh, data which is in the session, right? Means it is like, no, 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 that not like that. that. What I am saying is, these are the it's students which are already there, okay? Now, these are all row, also, uh, student 1 and 2 are also present in the database also, right? Now, if I add this student number 3, but this student number 3 is not present in my database, okay? But I am querying this data in this session. So in this session, as I'm querying it, so it will give me 
all the three students but as it is not present in the database so when will you uh, when you will open that database uh, through the db browser you will find that there are only two entries but when you will query this in this session you will find all the entries are there is it oh, like uh, so uh, it, it is like that it will uh, query all the data which is there in database also but it will also take care of this third student so what so we have to if you want to query all the uh, entries from the database then what we have to do the data then you will find that all of these three entries are present I so think there uh, is. Uh, if we want to query from the database, like, uh, is it like uh, it is like volatile type memory, just a catch? Yeah, you can consider it like that. And I think there is. Uh, Satyanarayan sir, do you remember uh, that executor something command is there, right? So yes, yes. yes Actually, you have that uh, you know db dot uh, session dot execute, or it might be there. So mm -hmm. what it is, you know, simply. Uh, the session is simply it is you know a temporary work area which is a volatile one which is available only for the current user. Okay, for example, if it is commit is there, the database is a persistent data. Both of them are not synchronized. So yeah. to make them synchronize, every update in the session, we try to do a commit. Okay, hope you understand. The layer sir, between the yeah hello. Yes, yeah, sir. One question yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So, so do we need to have multiple commits, or let's say I add three objects and I just do commit once? Yes, so, it's enough. It's enough because all of the changes you do, two, three, four, five records, you have been changed. Okay, all these are staying at the gate. The gate. The gate is nothing but a session. Okay. Yeah. Once you do a commit, immediately they are allowed into the database, persistent data. Okay. Thanks. So similarly, you do a one kind of experiment. What you do is first you do a simple query. Okay, student dot I think query or something, you know, you you get some list of data. So go to that you know uh, SQL like backend which is you using some you know uh, browser. You update the data there, clear without shutting down this particular server that uh, running Flask. Okay, yeah, yeah. So then you see the data again. Again you run a for loop and see the data again. Whatever the change you did there, that's not reflected. Yeah, because it was not there in the session. Yes, both of them are not synced. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So that it's a session is nothing but a particular temporary area. It's volatile until you close your server. So every particular change you do it in the session, you supposed to push it, just like throw it to the database persistent. Clear? Yeah. So the point I log in or let's say I start the server until the point I end the server, stop mm. the server. That is yes. the session. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. But every every transaction you do at the server should be pushed to the persistent data. Yeah. Okay. Clear then? Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. But thing is, somebody asked it. Actually, instead of every time without you know interacting with session directly, I want to do it from the DB. Yes, you can do it. There is a DB dot session dot execute query is there. That every time it interacts with the backend the server, that is you know backend database. Every time it tries to push the data from the database. So when we use execute, we don't need to commit. No, no execute in the sense which command you are doing inside the execute. So execute takes a SQL statement inside a raw SQL statement, a raw SQL. Okay. Okay, means uh, this time, if uh, like in this question only, we have used executor uh, and query. Then yes. we have we, we would have got only two tuples. Yes, because that that is you know like you execute it takes a raw statement of update, raw okay. statement of delete, raw statement of select. Okay. So directly it reflects to the persistent data. Okay. Understood it. Yeah, yeah. Clear. Yeah, that's a raw raw SQL statement. So that to avoid this raw SQL statement, a big statement. The SQL alchemy is provided you with built-in methods like query all, query something like that, filter by all these are. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Sujal. Uh, so has the uh, the solving of the mocks uh, done, or are this are this still many questions left? Hello, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Tell me. 
so I had some questions regarding the numericals. Uh, like when, where, where can I find the solutions to numericals? No, no. Actually, so, most of the numericals week-wise, it was discussed in the earlier sessions. Kindly look at that. Maybe the questions are on bandwidth. Maybe you have the yeah, links. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the detailed way that uh, even uh, even that earlier sessions in the live sessions it was discussed how to calculate that latency and bandwidth and disk writing and reading and all these are just you you just quickly open your byte string then there the similar question is that just you go to that particular time point and then just simply you can understand it's not a big easy big difficult okay. Uh, sir, can I ask if it's available on YouTube or not, sir? Yeah, it is available. All of yes. the particular sessions are there. Hundred percent, it's there. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sivani. Okay. Any uh, others? Yeah. Yeah, there was one more question. Hmm. So this is this question is very maybe you can try out this on your own. Okay. So okay, I will discuss it. Now, suppose we have this data, so which is coming from API. So uh, what is asking the route function that retrieves a particular gadget from the API is given below. Now we have this Flask application. So inside this Flask application, we have this endpoint API brands. And if brand in request dot ask, so we are using the query parameter. Okay, and we will look for the brand. And now if this brand in the, if brand in request dot args and this brand is equals to request dot args brand which means we will look for the data brand in this query parameter now if this brand is present inside my data so what will happen for brand in brands if brand brand so it will take this brand is equals to this brand so this brand is it will be equal to suppose here we, here we are using noise so it will be noise so after that it will give the it will take the description as one variable and then it will render this out.html so this out.html has this brand and it is a, it is title sorry so it has one p tag and inside that we are using this brand variable and description so basically we are using query parameter so you will see the query in the query parameter i am passing this brand noise so it will so the value of this brand will be noise and what is the description associated with that? That it is one of the leading Indian tech brands. So it will print. So the output will be you have selected noise and it is one of the leading tech brands. So it will be answer number C. Okay. So, okay, sir, ma maybe uh, this can I yeah, tell me? Question. Uh, in mm -hmm. some questions, we have route like on the like ever function. Uh, in other questions, somewhere we have mentioned like resources. And then we are using like functions we are giving at the end. So what's the difference mm -hmm. in that? Like, you, are you asking about this query parameter? Uh, not about this, ma'am. Like uh, route we mentioned in class, no, above the function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in somewhere we see that it, it's in the end, like resource, comma, then we give function name, then route. So something like what? Data, data and API endpoint, API resources. Uh, week six that are uh, different like uh, there have that any uh, how to so like in that somewhere we mentioned first the route then the functionality mm -hmm. uh, like that and somewhere we let, uh, we mentioned that route at the end as the resources uh so then answer would you like to take this question Yes. So uh, actually, uh, uh, Srishti, you know, just I'm typing some kind of route in the chat box. Can you just go through it? So hope that's what you are thinking. Please look at here. So like you have a local host. I'm typing in this 5000 and then followed by, you know, create or add. So in this, I'm giving that particular user ID. So then followed by. Uh, you know, like, uh, uh, sir, you can share your screen. Okay, 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 okay. It's not visible. Yeah. Okay, okay. In some question, it is uh, written as minus x get. I yes, think. yes, Telling. yes, yes. yes, yes. So, is it visible now? Just I'll open my library office. Is it visible, my screen? Yes. Yeah. I'm opening just a minute. 
<clears throat> my word up. See, so look at this. This particular address may be something you have been seen earlier. So this is uh, localhost and it contains that 5000 port and followed by some you know student and followed by you have something like student id okay then followed by create is it right click like this hello and something like minus x i am like asking Mm -hmm. In some flask, we have we are giving route on the top, like uh, we are mentioning uh, at a rate, uh, like uh, the, that. At the rate is uh, definitely it is you know uh, at the rate you are using means that is definitely it's a decorator. So at yeah. the at, yeah the decorator what do you use uh, any particular idea something like that mm -hmm. at the rate. So something you want to specify here. Mm -hmm. Not special. Like I'm just telling you in some question mm -hmm. that routing and like uh, in get and post it is mentioned in the last with a uh, term resources. Get resources. Then we mentioned like we mentioned that function is indexed. So then uh, resources in the bracket index comma. Then in slash get or post like that. I'm not mm -hmm. able. Maybe you can share your screen and any screen anything you have. Then please can you just. Quickly yes, share. I have to look into that. I have no, not. I will post it in the discourse quickly if you get it immediately. It sure, might be sure. there. And that, yeah, it is somebody has been API ad source. That is a different, I think, Imanshu. No, it's not that. Okay, okay. I think it's resource is. Uh, minus x get. Uh, what is that? It, it goes directly to the methods, I think. So no, I it think. is a curl. It would be a curl command. So there, uh, we, we first run our application and we will use a curl command. So we will write curl, that IP address. And after that, we will write hyphen x. So hyphen x takes the uh, method. So if we, if I write hyphen x, so and after that, if I write gate, then it will take the request will go like the request on the base URL will go by the get method. And if I write hyphen x and if I write post, then my request will go by the post method. OK. It's not a URL. You go to the method, right? Actual get. Yeah. No, so URL is mandated. URL. URL, URL is mandated. Yeah. Okay. But the but the sending methodology, okay. what kind of request you want to send it, whether you want to send it get or you want to send it post. By default, it is a get. Okay. If you want to exclusively say that, then it's a, a iPhone X and then method of sending. That is post. Okay. See, curly is what it is. You know, it is a command line interface where you can interact with the endpoint simple over you don't need browser simply so just simply you can uh, send a request to that endpoint from the command line of your uh, your terminal like your c prompt or something like dollar prompt whatever operating system you are using clear okay. sir so one more sir. question is there if uh, you have time to please mention it it's mm. like a wrapper function like sometimes like uh, which will come before which will come like in uh, uh, simply Shushti, yeah uh, i got your point uh, so what i will do we have uh, like uh, in the last term uh, in the quiz to revision session we discussed uh, the decorators in you know like in very detail uh, we okay. have discussed four or five examples of that practice assignment five questions okay. as well so is okay. it fine if i share you the link and also uh, that the session is tagged one so it will be useful for others, for as others well. sure, sure. yeah okay yeah. Well, i will I share that link Uh, so then, sir, uh, yeah, there were, uh, like in PYQs, I saw some question about uh, database relationship. And in that can, it, can you share it? Can you share it? Some keyword, it uh, I don't have a specification. Let me let me check. It's the keyword word like uh, back populate and populate. Yes, I, back, I, back ref, back ref, back ref, and populate. Yeah, I, I have a question. I have the hmm. question. Can I share okay. my screen? Uh, you can, you can. I'll stop sharing. Okay. 
Yeah, this is uh, uh, parent-child relationship, you know. So the section is going to be the uh, parent table and book is going to be the child table. Is it right? Because, you know, you can find the foreign key inside the book and section it contains a primary key. Is it clear? The, up to that, it's yeah. clear, no? That, that now, now, the, now the issue is inside the section, you can find the third column books. Is it right? You can find the third column inside the section model, the model class you are defined, you know, section. You can find section ID, section name, and books is there. Is it right? Did you find it? Okay, yeah, yeah, good. The books equal to db dot relationship, which it is creating a relationship with the book model. The book model is already it's coming in the next class. Mm -hmm. So that it is creating current section is relating to the book. The back ref of the section of the back ref name they defined as section offer. See the name of that uh, uh, back ref you can use anything. That that's not uh, you know specifically section off or something. Okay. You you can write any meaningful name. But the first relationship inside book you are giving no that should be matched to that which child you are referring. Hope you understand up to that. Is it clear? No. Okay. What exactly you know the section. It is directly connecting to the book child. Clear? Up to that, it's remember it, the relationship. Now we come to the book. Clear? When we come to the book, we are creating simply a foreign key. The foreign key is that section which takes that integer. Third column, I'm talking inside the book. I'm talking about third column. The foreign key which refers that section ID from the parent. <clears throat> what exactly is using book? you can refer that which section it belongs to that's the use of the foreign key is it clear yeah foreign key it's clear. foreign key advantage is using this particular book entity i can identify this book is located physically in which section is it clear yeah it's clear it's clear no now whatever the use of the back ref is very simple in the section something like a section id Five the section ID inside the library. What are all the books is there? You might have many books there. Is okay. it right? Yeah. That can be referred by using this particular books. You know that particular section of backgraph you are creating. You know that you can refer. To. So it is you know using foreign key you can relate child entity with the parent entity. Using backgraph that parent entity can refer the children. That's simple. Over. Is it clear? It will create another column in the book. Yes, exactly. It creates another column in the book. But that book column is that a lot of books is there inside. Uh -huh. Because, you know, parent can have many child. Is it right? It's a simple scenario in the real scenario. A parent can have many children, five or six or seven. A section can have many books. Is it right? Yes. But the book, but the book is there. It is have a single entry of that one parent only. Book is having only one section. That book is available only in the section because the book is having referring that particular section number three or section number four. You have to go and search it. Go mm -hmm. Is it clear? So that the relationship, what it is doing, you know, a complete reference, a pointer. It is creating a bunch of pointers. You, if you see that a bunch of references whatever the books belongs to the current section all of them referred by the books the third column inside the section hope you understand yeah i'm, I'm getting uh... see it, it is you know always a parent child relationship is there is it clear it, you you just think about uh, a physical library even you think a physical library a physical library third section is there they'll they, they'll put it a lot of books inside is it clear lot of books inside that section it contains all the books collection if you go to the section if you go to the section what are all the books available in the section you can get it that's called back ref Is okay, it now i got this part mm -hmm. but if i use secondary then it will it will create that relationship in other <laughs> other table yes other yes yes back refs, you can create any number I can create another background below that books. I can do it. 
I can do no. Uh, in place of backrest, I use second reel, like in the second reel. Screen, screencast uh, professor has used secondary. What is secondary? Uh, like secondary word. Uh, I think secondary word is there. Like maybe in, in place of backrest. Back uh, secondary. Maybe I have to look at. Just you post it. But, but this is clear. This question is very clear. Yeah, this clear. This yes. question is very clear. But secondary, please just you quickly post it in the discourse and mentioning my name so that uh, immediately I'll respond and I'll watch the screencast also. Uh, taste sir, screencast and I'll reply back to you. Okay. Second ref, okay? Yeah. Sir, so I got that question. What I was mentioning. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Tell me, tell me. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, okay you can. Um, sir, in that same question book section, it is for one to many. I watched your session. Uh, thanks. It was very good. But many to many, is there any hint for many to many? Uh, many to many, it is actually primary key to foreign key is what exactly is one to many? Is over? Yes. Yeah. One parent can have many relations. Yes. So many, many to see many to many, you want to do it is very simple example. What exactly is earlier you did it some of your lab experiments like student is there you have uh, uh, you know courses is there is yeah. it there yeah Be between that there is a particular enrollment yeah. is, do you find the enrollments yes. yes the enrollments what it is doing is a student can register for many courses yeah a student can register for many courses. And one course, one course may have, can have that many students. So yes. how this, how this is managed using enroll? This yep. en this enroll is doing handling of many students and many courses. Over. Hope you understand. Yeah, but from the code, how can we get there? Because in the previous code the section, we have only one primary key and one primary. <coughs> yes, one yes. Primary no, 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 no. Uh, please go to the previous one if you think about that. The books and section is there. Books and section only you are talking about? Yeah, that is for one too many. I got it. No, 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 no. One too many in terms of that section. If, if you are looking, you are looking at the standing position of section and you say that, you say that one parent can have that many books. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. But in the in the case of if you look at, at the books, you know, if you have the looking at the books, sir, one book cannot be placed at many sections. So yeah. many, many to one. Yeah. So but many to many is not there there. Okay. It's it's not there. Because you know, uh, they, they don't have that twice versa kind of relationship is there. But thing is, uh, you don't have a chance of it. So that's the reason enrollment is maintained. The enrollment it will take care of that many students. And many courses. Okay. Be so so more, most of the times, many to many relationship, if we want to create it, we definitely take one primary key of the one table, another primary key of the another table, and we try to create a mediator. That mediator is creating many to many relationship. Okay, got it. That's what I want to explain. Okay. Clear then. Fine, fine. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, API resource. So it is taking, yeah, it is creating API. I think. Uh, Kumari has been posted, am I right? No, Srishti. Um, yeah. Myself. Yeah, Srishti. Yeah, Srishti. So it is it is creating API resource. API resource means what you know, you are not creating a traditional app sorry, Flask application. You are creating that Flask RESTful application. Is it clear then? Yeah, yeah. Flask RESTful, what it will do is you are inheriting from the resource base class. So the resource based class, what it is having, it is having the predefined methods like get, put, post, and delete. Is it there? Yeah. So all these four methods are few of the methods you are overriding with your own functionality. Yeah. Okay. Now this particular class my API is not a traditional application. What the traditional class application it will do is it always tries to generate that. Uh, HTML uh, pages. Is it right? Yeah. But that API application, what it will do is it always tries to generate that JSON responses. Yeah. Okay. After okay. it, it's, it's clear, yeah. no? Yeah. Now we have created that API resource. That API resource we are adding with endpoints. That is API get, API port, and API post. Three endpoints. Yeah. 
now three endpoints tries to choose these two functions which one has to be executed fine yeah now get is matching to get okay over ha huh. put is matching to put okay yeah. but what about post but post tries to match to some of the defined method but post method is not defined is it clear yeah how so they are running the application in this application i am running it locally so that server is ready server is able to accept that api requests from from others from others means you are executing from curl okay so which of the following curl command will throw an error so first, is... ah, get get is no problem you found a end point yeah put also we found end point hmm but post is not having a end point yeah so post you are trying to hit it but post end point is not there because only two functions are defined yeah so another one you did it a get but inside you did it you know put operation yeah. see you are trying to execute the get end point mm -hmm. but the action you are trying to execute is put is it works no oh. yeah uh, i just please my I guess it should not work, but it is working here. I'm asking fourth one. Sorry, fourth operation I'm asking. Huh. See, first operation is very clear. Get you are calling and get uh, method of sending you are doing. Yeah. Second end point is put your call, put your end point and put a verb you are calling. Hmm. Third one you are you are calling post and you are trying to uh, invoke the verb is post. It doesn't work. It's very yeah. clear. What about the fourth one? Fourth one, you are trying to hit the end point is get API end point. Ah. Huh. The calling verb is put. Is it works? It will work. What is output? It will work and hello from your put API. Yes, it will work. Hello from the put. Ah. Huh. You are calling the end point is API get, but intentionally we try to invoke the put method inside. Okay. So. Yeah. What Huh. One second, mm -hmm. can I ask one? Like in inside the class, this mm -hmm. get and put is like uh, uh, that only we can mention. We cannot like it is. Uh, we cannot give our, our name and like. Uh, no, no, because resource is having a predefined methods. Okay. That must be implemented in the subclass. Okay. okay. That predefined methods are get, put, post, and delete. Of course, one more method is there. We can see that later. Huh. these four operations are there those are earlier it is defined in the resource class you are importing from the flask restful yeah so there you have to override here and same name you have to give it you cannot write your own user defined function okay. if you write it also you cannot call it okay okay so, this minus x um, a get command that yes, the, the, the method of sending the method of verb you are sending so that will go to the function put right this is not yes. a method Yes, it it is going for the function put exactly, exactly. So, so in the fourth option, what will happen? Yeah, fourth option, what will happen is it is hitting the end point get. It tries to invoke okay. the end point get with the method of put. Clear? Okay. So that it it is going that API dot add resource API get it is going, but because of the put where because of the put where it doesn't include the get. It it invokes the put method. Yeah, got it. End points, end points. What it will do is it tries to open that user. You can send to this end point, but whether it is processed or not is based on this verbs after X or what you are specifying. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the sixth, sixth option is wrong, right? Because post no, is no, no, no. Sixth option is it's there. It works hundred percent because there is end point is defined. API dot add resource end point is defined. Oh. But this end point will process the get verb, so that you will get that hello from get API. It works. Okay. It works. It works. Only fourth option, the uh, third and fourth. Sorry, only third doesn't work, right? Yes, doesn't work because see whatever add resource you are doing by API end points you are giving. No, these end points are publicly available to the end users. Publicly available. they can they can invoke from their end point like they can invoke from the command prompt or somewhere like thunder client or something you know but the processing whatever the particular end point received who has to process 
whether get has to process put has to process that is dis decided by the after minus x okay so for okay. this understanding the method doesn't matter only that verb matters here right yes yes you see both of them are required for example i did not give end point like api slash iatm no end point is defined no add resource no. now if you run the curl command in the initial end point in the first part itself it will fail it doesn't think about verb is it right oh, okay because there is no end point publicly we announced it but somebody tries to hit that end point no way if you try to hit the first end point is a right hit then it knows that what to be processed that is by minus x okay one okay. more question is there regarding this yes. Yes. The add resource can can we mention something else like here it is yes you, yes you can write you can write slash uh, iatm slash madras you can write no problem but in that function we cannot write our no no in the function only the four functions you can write it okay okay then okay yeah and if these are options like three options are there with three uh, routes we can go to the this uh, yes people. yes route name add resource route name you can write anything don't need that api and then slash and uh, something like post put you can write anything that's okay. a user defined by public publicly announced one okay like when you know you are announcing to the public if you want any service just you can call it that that's that's what the end point name but yeah. inside what method is process is only four methods inside uh -huh. Okay. That is that is not drawn to that. That is directed by by using minus x. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, Thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. S sir, so you said that uh, resource is uh, we are inheriting the API class API from resource. Mm -hmm. So is it that that and you said that we cannot define our own methods inside? No, no. You can write it. You can write it. But that invoking is not possible using which verb you can invoke. that invoking is done by after x minus x you are writing no ha uh ha -huh. that method that particular minus x and the method name post or get that will reflect to the particular get output for example you write user defined method like def function 1 function 1 okay clear yeah yeah, yeah. how can you invoke that that's what the question mark okay so resource is a abstract class yes yes so oh. if you write a user defined function inside this what you can do is that function you can call it inside a post method simply like a local job it can do ha uh ha -huh. understood yes sir a local processing it will do and local processing output it again return back to the caller the caller might be post or get or delete or something put simple because to to modularize like you know you want to modularize that your code into the different parts but the api invoking methods are different user defined methods are different but both are resided in the same class no problem Yeah, yeah, I was coming from the same thought of uh, this. That yes. I, if I have multiple routers, and yes. I have to group them. So how can I? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can okay. do it. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. Hello. So one yeah. more. Yeah. You can. Yes. Can I see? Ah, you want to share it? Yes. Sir. You can share. No problem. Is it visible, sir? Just zoom it, ah. Huh? I think it's a mobile or something. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> is it possible? Yeah, it is okay. Now I think it is big screen. Just zoom. Yeah. Okay. That so this question. Wait, wait, wait. Which question? Yeah, this is no. So this Ah, what is the question then? Question, question. Can you show that question? Yeah. If from this year it is started, so there is there is a starting part of the question is what? From here, app dot py. Yes, sir. Okay. So you have the template and redirect and then Flask instance is created. The name is given. See, look at here. Remember, the name is sending as a parameter. and the ring of the parameter is definitely default is string and you are processing with high name and this is your home page okay so index 1 is taking a string argument now index 2 is there it is taking a route first index followed by string name okay yeah it is taking the name as a parameter yes 
and it is checking whether it is xyz if it is xyz you are redirecting to the url for the index one and sending the same xyz it's hard coded one directly you send it xyz okay okay so next otherwise index 3 it's going index 3 is second index so second index is just simply you are rendering that yes okay fine this is what the html it contains href it is taking url for index 1 hmm? that index 1 url for means you are trying to hit that end point of index 1 so index one endpoint means hi name this is hand page is going to be printed as href yes come to down so come to down please come to down wait this one. so no no so that particular question continuation is the template you are showing no after template that's a template is ended yes okay sir. okay okay template is ended if the above flask application is running locally in 5000 which of the following statements is true about above code snippet wait okay just come to down there First, you are calling for the endpoint XYZ. The browser will show that not found error. See uh, what exactly you know. Along with this localhost base URL, you try to send that XYZ as a parameter. Is it clear? Yes, sir. You are sending XYZ as a parameter. Once you are sending XYZ as a parameter, what happens? You know, the first index one is called. Is it right? Yes, sir. It is taking directly a string, like base URL plus XYZ. What it is printed? Hi, that name, and then followed by this is your home page. Is it clear? Yes, sir. It is printed so that no error is there. So that's the reason the first option is wrong. Yes. Sir. Clear. So on clicking of the link go back in index, the browser will render. So that, that's not right. First, basically, for the first statement itself, it is wrong. Second one is there. So uh, IABC is this is your home page. So you, you are just you are putting it is slash without any other endpoint because you know directly you are putting just 5000 and slash. Is it your home page? Just go there. Just just go there. Index three is called. Is it clear? Sorry, index three index three is there. Oh sorry sorry. You are putting that. You are putting that. Yeah. Uh, second index, what is that second index? Second index is expecting, no? Hope that endpoint is not talking about the second option. So the first route is there. Come to down, come to down, please here. Come to down. The options, I want to see that. That option is on. Okay, okay, okay. Please, please, please. Here, what happened, you know? Uh, uh, I think that the red color is given, no? For the endpoint, it is that one statement. On clicking and high ABC is a one statement. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. See, yeah, please understand that on clicking on the go back link end point. So what will be rendered? On clicking on go back. See, second option is there. No, second option contains two lines. First option contains only one line. Is it clear? The first and second is clear. Last two, uh, three and four is confusion. No, no, no. Wait, wait. wait. First, you understand. First option statement is one statement or two statements. The first, one statement. first first option, first option, red color is there. No options. One. one is one it statement. one statement or two statement? One statement, sir. Yes. First, you come to the conclusion that is one statement. One statement. So yes. now, second and third statements belongs to option two. Clear? Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, once that already HTML file is rendered. You click on go back button in the index.html. Go to that HTML rendering. There is a go back button, is there? Yes, sir. So, this what it will search for index one? Yes, sir. With ABC argument. So, index one ABC argument, what it is printed? Hi, name, first, first one. Yeah, first one is executed. So, that successfully it is executed. Yeah. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So, that the second statement and third statement belongs to option two. Okay, please come to the third option. Now, the third option also two lines of statements is there. That is for the end point, first index slash XYZ, the browser will redirect to second index. That's, that's, that's completely correct. You know, direct uh, end point, first index slash XYZ. 
So first index slash x y z means string. You are taking a string argument. That string argument is stored with x y z, and second index route is executed. That's very clear. Any doubt in the third option? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, so can you explain the third option? I'm not. Yeah. For, see, for the endpoint means base URL. Base URL is localhost five thousand yeah. slash. First index slash x y z. Then what happens? You know, please go to the top. It go to that. It go to that index two. See, go to that index two. Its route is mapped. Yeah. It yeah. is taking x y z as a parameter. Okay. Is it clear? That x y z condition is satisfied. Once x y z condition is satisfied, what you are rendering again? You are rendering index one. Okay. With same x y z. Okay. Clear. Yeah. yeah. So, so that it is executed. No issue in that. No issue in that. Okay. Okay then. Yeah. Now you come to the fourth one. Fourth one is having first end point, first end x slash a b c. You are calling with a b c, so that you are not passing that x y z. You are passing a b c. So if condition is definitely not satisfied, is it clear? Yes, sir. So that U R L function. So that will redirect it to index three. That's function index three. That is second index. Please go to the index three function. So so that go for the else part now. What is the else part is redirecting? It is taking the index three. So index three, index three is trying to render that index three, which renders that index dot html. Is it clear? Index dot html. Yes, sir. So what is there in my index dot html? So it is expecting URL for index one, and name is ABC. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. It is trying to go for that URL for index one, and name is ABC. But please go to that index one. That's URL for index one. What it is expecting? It is a name. Wait, 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 wait. It is taking a name so that the name as a parameter. Forget about the URL endpoint. So the name is that A B C. So please come to the down. Why it is the fourth option is wrong? We'll just we go for that. For the end point, first index A B C. You type the local host all the stuff, followed by first index, then followed by A B C or sending. So definitely it will call that the second function. The second function is index two. So index two will go for the else part. So in the else part, you are trying to call that index three. Okay, in the else part, please go to the else part. Yeah, so it is calling the URL for index three, index three. So this index three is trying to render that index dot html. Yes, come to the index dot html. Index dot html. It is trying to um, href URL for index one and ABC. So here there is a problem. The URL for index one you are trying to get means so that URL of the index one is mm -hmm. URL for index one is go to the top now. Index one function what you are defined? Yes. So index one URL for it that URL you are getting. Uh, the name you are passing is. Come to down. The name you are passing is A B C. No, please come to down. Yeah, it is okay. I think name should be rendered. I think fourth option it looks like works. Can you test it once? I no, think no. the. Have you tested? No, no. I think the fourth option. I don't find any wrong in that. Others, anyone identified anything sir, wrong? Sir, can I ask something? Sir, yes. go back. Go back. The third option. Third option is okay. Please come to third option. Third option. No, third option and fourth option are similar, sir. But uh, you have X Y Z and A B C. Yes. In both cases, uh, function index three is uh, getting activated. Yes. Um, but that is unlikely to go into index three and uh, going into index one. With uh, X Y Z and A B C being different. Yes, both part it is going. No, both can't be. No, no. Both can be correct. Both no, no, no. Th third one is perfectly correct. Then X Y Z also going to else part, no sir. No, no. So X Y Z doesn't go for else part because if condition is checked based on X Y Z. See, go to the if condition. If condition is a direct direct link, 
between that index one see index one and index two direct but whenever other than x y z is passed else part is executed what the else part ah uh, else part is doing else sir, part is uh, sir in that statement uh, if you please go down hmm? in that statement it gives uh, it is going into index 3 no sir third hmm? option hmm? same pattern for fourth hmm? option and the third option uh -huh. it says it is going into function index 3 second mm -hmm. index yes but, but, but it's going for index 1 is it's a direct the third option is direct but but the, this okay 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 yeah yeah cool 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 actually the functionality works but the statement is wrong okay i think i know others i think girl you have shared yeah yeah execution no problem it works but the problem is the functionality defined the for the end point first index abc is it will redirect to index 3 that is second index no it's not going for index 3 okay it will go for index 1 right yes see please go to the come to down so that else part it's going so from the else part it's going for the index 3 from the index 3 it is going for index 1 is it right yeah so that finally the end point is not ended with index 3 it is ended with index 1 simple yeah hope you understand yes so sir uh, yes, please please come to the question question please i think error they asked you know which of them are written error please come to the this one code Mm -hmm. No, no. Just I'm thinking about the question statement. The question statement. Come to the question statement. So, in the following application is running locally. Which of the following statements are true about the code snippet? About the code snippet, which of them is wrong? Which of them are true? Second and third is true, no doubt. Fourth one is first. It's going that else part of the first index. Due to the else part, it's going for uh, index three. Index three is redirecting to index one. Is it right? Other somebody wants to respond for this one. Who is that boy? Anything he understands something? Sir, uh, mm. that, that's what I mean, sir. For mm. third option and fourth option, mm -hmm. the, the the end point being x y is that an A B C in a different mm. way? Yes, yes. It cannot activate the else condition in index two. Mm -hmm. And thereby enabling index three and going into index one. Yes, it's not possible. Yes, yes. So going therefore, index three. Yeah. Therefore, either one of the option mm. should be wrong. Yes. Should after going for, after going for index three, the rendering job is done. Not end. Uh, uh, you know, it's not going for rendering job is done. Rendering job is as usual. No, it's not going for the index one. Uh, when it goes to index three, it automatically goes to index one, sir. No, no, no. Rendering job is done in index three. Rendering job is different. Redirecting is different. Okay, sir. You understood? Yes, sir. So But, what uh, they what they said it is you know the result is same, sir. Um, I think the statement will be same. No, no, no. I think the statement is different because going for the index uh, rendering. So when it's going for rendering. Uh, please go to the top please it is definitely expects uh, parameter see see index 1 is expecting a parameter is it clear yes. is it clear that parameter is populated through router is it clear one yes, doubt sir. why the third yeah. option is going to index 3 because no, no. if yeah, it is part, because of the else part yeah but in third statement we don't it is x y z so it won't go to the else part right Uh, it will go to index dot html sir i have the same doubt yeah it will go to the index dot html but you get error the reason is but the reason is you don't have this particular name no name is taken as a parameter for index 1 html the name is missing i think so but name is by default given abc here in the index dot html i think uh, you have to run it and see this one i think uh, because If you have run it and see this at different ten points, then you might get it. What's wrong with that fourth one? But second and third is clear. Uh, but we have to check about that. Third is correct, sir, because third, uh, third is third is perfectly correct. 
Uh, can you please put this question on the discourse? Yeah, you can. You can just. Sometimes it happens that for uh, some, like, so for some paper, there is some sort of correction. Yes. So maybe this question is one of those. We will check it again. Okay, please put this question. Yeah, on please put it, the question inside it immediately by evening. I'll try to execute this and I'll reply for this one. Okay. 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 On the mission, I'll try it. Huh? So that confusion will go off. So please take the two screenshots and uh, put it. Yeah. Third option doesn't return errors, Auro. That's sure. Yeah, Only third, third. I'm sure. I'm asking about fourth. fourth ah, fourth one. We have to check it. What's wrong in that? Yeah, yeah. So simply. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Others? Any other thing? Hope I think we can end the session. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, thank Shivani. Thank, thank, okay. thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank all you. the best then. All Thanks the best. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Yeah. Best luck for your exam. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.